Good afternoon, and thank you very much for coming to Toronto Police Headquarters. Today, I'd like to introduce to you Detective Constable Conrad Wong of uh, the Ch Child and Youth Advocacy Center, and also uh, Toronto Branch Director David Flunning of the Children's Aid Society of Toronto. They will be here um, to update us on the investigation of Dewan Riza. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming today. Um, so on Friday, May 15th, 2015, the Toronto Police Service issued a press release regarding the arrest of Dewan Saeed Moshe Reza in regards to a sexual assault investigation. He was arrested the day before. At the time of the press release, it was alleged that on Sunday, May 3rd, 2015, a six-year-old boy attended the summer Islamic school that runs out of the Danforth Islamic Center at 3018 Danforth Avenue. Shortly after class had ended, the boy was approached by the accused within the building. The accused then showed the boy a sexually explicit video and proceeded to sexually assault the boy. Dewan Saeed Moshe Reza was charged with make available sexually explicit material to a person under 16 for a specific, or sorry, for a specific criminal offense, invitation to sexual touching of a person under 16 years of age, sexual assault, and sexual interference with a person under 16. He appeared in court at College Park on Friday, May 15th, 2015. Police were concerned that the accused had access to other children at the time um, because he was at the school in addition to having access to children who attended two home daycares in the city of Toronto. From 1999 to 2009, the accused was present in the home daycares in the Crescent Town neighborhood of Toronto. This daycare in the Danforth Avenue and Victoria Park Avenue area subsequently moved to the address at 155 Heal Avenue from 2009 to the present day. As a result of this information, police sought the assistance of the public as there was reason to believe there were more victims. Police worked in collaboration with the Toronto Children's Aid Society and subsequently the daycare at 155 Heal Avenue was shut down. After the press release, tips from the public have been investigated and as a result of this new information being received, Dewan Saeed Moshe Reza, 69, from Toronto, was arrested this morning by officers from the Child and Youth Advocacy Centre. It was further alleged that sometime between January 2003 and December 2007, when the child was between the ages of 7 and 11 years old, he attended the home daycare located in the Crescent Town neighbourhood. When the accused was alone with the child, he would sexually assault him. It is further alleged that sometime between January 2007 and December 2011, when the child was between 11 and 15 years old, he attended 155 Heal Avenue, where the accused showed the child a sexually explicit video, and the man, or sorry, the accused proceeded to sexually assault the boy again. Dewan Saeed Moshe Reza now faces four additional charges. It's two counts of sexual assault and two counts of sexual interference. He is scheduled to appear in court today at 444 Young Street at College Park Courts uh, at two o'clock. Police still believe there are more victims and would like to speak with anyone who may have information regarding this investigation. I am appealing for them to come forward so that we can refer them to the support services that they may need regardless of their decision to proceed criminally. Did, what, what, uh, how did he have access to the, to the two daycares? Okay, so the, it's, uh, it's a family-run licensed daycare and uh, the accused was residing at those addresses. It was his home. Yes. Um, and so, have you? Has anybody else come forward and talked other than the two um, that you mentioned? Well, we are uh, again speaking. We want to speak with the public, and we want to speak with them so that we get more information uh, regarding any other children that may have attended this daycare, um, or anyone else may, who may have who may have had contact with Mr. Reza. Uh, we believe that there are more victims out there and specifically we would like to speak with those individuals and again regardless of whether or not they choose to proceed with anything criminally um, we still would like to speak with them so that we can put them in contact with the support networks uh, that the child and youth advocacy uh, offers do you have a connection with the uh summer islamic uh, daycare as well? no he did not somebody had mentioned that he um, was doing something a sunday program with them or something because it happened on the Sunday, right? It, it did happen on the Sunday. Uh, the first allegation occurred on that Sunday. Um, however, he has no affiliation to the Danforth Islamic Center. Um, 
that's, yeah, he doesn't have any affiliation to that center. Okay. That office that he had there in that building, has that been closed down or is that? Um, as far as I, I, I believe, yes. Yes, his, his business is no longer running as far as I know. Okay. Has he gone through any security check or background check before he runs his uh, daycare? Well, it's not him who's opened the daycare. Um, he just had access to the children um, at the time, so it's not him who had to physically go through those. I, I'm not sure. Um, it, it's, a, uh, it's a licensed daycare, I can tell you that much. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of who owns a daycare. Um, it's, although, you know, it, the, he had access to the children at the daycare, um, it doesn't directly involve the daycare and the staff members who worked at that daycare. Do you know how many children they were licensed to have there? I, I don't know. I don't know. Are there any questions for uh, David Morgan or Joe Zoltz? Well, real, before we, um, did, were both these home daycares his homes? Did, I mean, essentially, did he just move in 2009? Yes, that's and correct. That, okay. Yeah. And it, he, um, when he was arrested on the, I guess, the 15th, was he, was he released? No, he was held for a show cause hearing. Uh, he had a bail hearing, and uh, he was released on a bail subsequently to that. He'll have another hearing today. And yes, he will appear today at court at 2 o'clock at uh, College Park Courts. I mean, we, obviously, in a situation like this, when you have, uh, you know, so much access to children, you have two instances like this. Um, you have to believe that this is not an isolated situation. Obviously, but, I mean, can you just talk to to that? I mean, it, it, there's got to be some concern. Well, again, and that's why we are appealing to the public. Um, we believe that there. I believe that there are more victims um, out there and we would like to speak with them. Um, at the end of the day, we're concerned about uh, the safety of these kids um, who have had contact with them. And uh, regardless of whether or not they wish to proceed criminally with anything, uh, we would still like to put them in contact with our support networks um, so that they have access uh, to the support networks and they can um, receive that assistance. When, during the investigation, was there any other evidence that was found? I mean, I don't know if you've looked at computers and things like that. It, that's part of the investigation, um, and because the investigation is before the courts, uh, I'm not going to comment on too much of the specifics, um, but the, there is other information there. Okay. Any questions for the detective, Any questions for Jose? Uh, sure. And perhaps I could just add on to the question that you asked about the number of potential victims. This is, is in my view, particularly very important to advertise a situation such as this because children are very reluctant to come forward regarding child sexual abuse uh, for all sorts of reasons. They may have been threatened. They may have not understood what was happening to them uh, for numerous reasons. So doing this and bringing this out to the public uh, may bring it to the attention of people who are children now or perhaps even adults who could come forward. How specific we can get, but the two people that have come forward, were, were there any indication that there were threats or anything like that made towards these children? Well, I don't think we can th speak specifically about the individual children. I don't think that would be appropriate, um, but it's not unusual in situations of child sexual abuse uh, for there to be inducements, for there to be threats, ways to keep the child quiet. Uh, so that's not unusual. The other people in the home where the daycare was, did, they, did anybody else uh, have any information? Is this something that was out of the blue? I mean, in fact, perhaps that's a good to I mean, once again, I mean, we're, that's the reason why we're here and why we're doing this new news conference so that we can disseminate that information out to the media so that, um, that they know that we're concerned uh, that there may be other children uh, who have been affected by this and who are too shy or too embarrassed or whatever it might be uh, to come forward to talk, talk to the police, uh, regardless if they talk to the police or if they talk to one of our partner agencies. Uh, it's just important that uh, these children come forward and speak to us. That's, that's the most important thing. What about other people that worked in the daycare? Has it, I mean, have, did they ever notice anything? Did they ever see anything strange? 
Again, I think that would go into specifics with regards to the investigation, and uh, I don't think it would be appropriate to comment on that. I could certainly speak in general to that in terms okay. of the issues of child sexual abuse, if that's appropriate. Um, uh, people who sexually abuse children do it in, in private, do it away from others, and it's quite often uh, a shock to those around the offender that this has happened. There are no signs. Uh, people sometimes think that the uh, people who sexually abuse children, uh, there would be some signs. You would see something about them, they would look different, and that's not the case, uh, which makes it all the more damaging, all the more difficult to deal with. Yeah, I, we actually spoke with some people that knew knew him, and, and again, you get that that response. Oh no, he was a great guy. He was such a good guy. I mean, you're saying that that's not uncommon. It's almost like a double life. Well, it's, it's definitely not uncommon. You look at cases that have been in the media recently. The deputy minister of education, uh, who was convicted and uh, recently and sentenced regarding uh, child pornography, uh, I think that was a shock to many of the people within his circle of friends and associates. Thank you very much, and once again, for anyone, uh, any families that do speak to uh, their children tonight, if they do want to report this but not go through with um, the regular channels of Toronto Police, they can always call the Child and Youth Advocacy Centre at 416-808-2922. Thank you. That concludes today's conference.